Hello, hello, Caligra friends. Aaron here. Uh, let me just check my volume. There we go. Cool. Uh, so it's a little earlier on a Thursday than I would normally stream. Um, but today, because it's earlier, the sun isn't directly there. I just get a nice ambient light in my office instead of me looking like a ghost during my stream or like very weirdly lit on my face. So we're going to try that out for today. Um, let's see what else. Mm, so yes, yeah, so today uh, I'm going to be doing a uh, copper plate. I'm going to be doing a little bit of variations. So what that means is kind of what we've been doing for the past nine, nine weeks, two and a half months, almost three months now. Anyways, uh, I was teaching like very basic copper plate, how to build the letters, etc., how to put them all together, how to make sentences and words and all that kind of stuff. So now I wanted to kind of go into, um, maybe breaking some of those rules so you can kind of make a little bit of a variation and start playing with it a little bit and still have it be legible because you know how the the words are built uh, or how the letters are built anyways from the basic strokes so I'll get started on that where's my glove I always must need my fancy glove otherwise I don't I just it just makes me feel like I'm professional you know uh, okay cool so I'll switch my my scene. There we go. So, oh, also fun stuff. So I, uh, I, I guess I'm a, a real influencer, something micro influencer, um, for calligraphy. How fun is that? But, um, I got sent, uh, a few inks from this brand called Fairswell Press and they, uh, do stationery and, um, fountain pens and inks and whatnot and they're based out actually out of Canada they're in Ontario from I'm pretty sure but there's no sort I'm in Quebec so there's no stores here but uh, they sent me they sent me their new collection of three inks so I'll be using that today because I'm like oh, this is fun it's not a paid advertisement but like they totally send them to me for free just to be really really transparent about it uh, I'm just gonna do a little show and tell first though because they're like really cute like look at the packaging isn't this packaging adorable? I can't even handle it. And this is like glass and like really metal. It's very cool. Um, so I have three colors. I have uh, April showers. So this one you can see on the bottom there's some silver. It's just settled so it's shiny. Oh hello Sarah. I saw you just pop up there. You've never seen calligraphy before. Well get ready. We're gonna do some. <laughs> But yeah, I got this. So they're meant for uh, um, like fountain pens, but you can also use a dip pen with that too. So I got that one. And then the other, pa the, the box that it came with, look how cute the box is. I can't even handle it. It's so freaking cute. Um, so yeah, this is called April Showers. And then this one is Morningside Mint. My husband saw these bottles and he was like, they kind of look like they should be for um, like Christmas ornaments to hang on the tree. And then I have another one, Madame Mulberry. So I'll, I'm going to be using them today to, for my, my stuff. So we're going to see. So if you've never seen calligraphy before, that's cool. No problem. I'll, I'll show you the eight basic strokes of the copper plate, which is the script that I do. Um, and uh, which color will I use? I'll use the mulberry. Or uh, let me just... There we go, so you can see me a bit better. Uh, I think I'll go with the green first. I mean, it's kind of springtime right now, where I am. So I'll just go over the tools really quickly. So this is an oblique pen holder. This one's a bit fancier, but you don't need a fancy one like this. Because uh, this one has been hand turned and has a, a fun, this is called the flange. So with the flange, uh, this is to put these nibs in, which are removable. Um, so yeah, so this is a pen holder, this is a flange, this is a nib. 
The particular nib I'm using is, uh, there's many different brands, many different kinds. Uh, this is an EF Principle, if you ever want to look it up. <laughs> That's what this one is. I have some paper that I printed out guidelines on. Guidelines are really important when you're doing calligraphy. Uh, at least at least when starting out as well uh, because keeping consistent lines and baselines and things are pretty important and my ink in my little holder and a little bit of water and some paper towel that's pretty much it so pretty much all you need so I'll go over the basic strokes and if you've never seen one of these pens work actually I can give you, I can show you that too, hold on. So the way it works, so when you go up with the stroke, the line will be thin, but when you go down, you're supposed to press, and if you see the tines will separate, and then the line will be thicker as you pull down. So that's what will be happening on my paper. I know the first time I saw that happen, when I first started learning, it was like magic. I don't understand. So I'll zoom in and I'll just show you a little bit how it works. So we're going up, it's thin. And as you're going down, I'm pressing and then it's thick. It's very cool. yeah it's very cool like you can fake it with like regular pens uh, you can do this with a pencil too if you feel so inclined to be kind of uh, artistic um, but you don't have one of these you can do anything that I'm doing right now you can do with a pencil um, it doesn't have to be a fancy pencil just like a regular one so up and away from you is thin you know pressure and then you're pressing So you get a thick in the middle. It just won't be as bold, obviously, but you have that in the middle. It's a bit thicker. It's also because I'm watching my the camera instead of looking at my paper. It's always a bit weird. So if you feel like you want to follow along with me, you totally can. You just need a pencil and a piece of paper and just like put a baseline, like with a ruler, and just line your paper. All right. So cool. Glad that you'll be following along. So I'll go over quickly what the eight uh, basic strokes are. And these are the basics of how to build a letter, like build your alphabet, okay? So the first one is an entry stroke, which is just a line that's light going away from you. That's at a 40-ish degree angle. The second one, we're gonna do an oval. So, uh, Copper plate, generally speaking, is at a 55 degree, which is what those dotted lines are. So, which means that the thick lines should be at that 55 degree angle. So I'm gonna do an oval. And for the purposes of this, the top of my oval, this I, I always refer to as 12 p.m. This is noon on a clock. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go press, come back around, and then go up again. So here, down, and then up. Then we have an underturn, which starts here, press, pulling down, and then turning away and going back up again. Now try and get as close as possible to see. see. So we have entry stroke, we have oval, we have an underturn. Uh, it holds a fair bit, oddly enough. You wouldn't think, but does it holds it holds more than you think it will, but you do have to go back in and dip. Because on the other side, you can see there's a bunch on the inside here.
depends also how uh, depends also how hard you're pressing. So like the harder you're pressing, the wider the tines will go, the more ink will be deposited. So if your thicks aren't in humongously thick, your ink will go longer. And if it, they're really thin, then you, uh, sorry, thick, you can't go too far. And then if they're really thin, then the ink will last longer. Yes, that made, I think that made sense. <laughs> uh, so we have underturns, but we have an underturn that's a short one and then an underturn that's a long one. So down, and then up. Then we have what's called an ascender loop because the space in between here to here is called an ascender. The, the, this is your ascender space and this is the ascender line. This is, is your uh, your waist waistline. This is your baseline. This is your descender line. The space in here is your descender space and this is your ascender space and here is called your is your x height. Sounds kind of complicated, I promise. It's, it's really not that bad. <laughs> so you can do a loop here for the ascender loop that starts up here. And as you're coming down, you're pressing. So up and around and then pressing down. Then we have the descender loop. So it's essentially the opposite of this guy. We're starting at the, the waistline pressing, going all the way down to the descender, coming back up again at the baseline, and then crossing. Then we have a downstroke, a small one, a downstroke, a bigger one. Uh, color. When it's a dip pen, you can absolutely switch all you want. Like if I wanted to just go into another color, it's not a problem, doesn't matter. Um, two, two weeks ago, I wanna say two weeks ago, I did a, actually I'll just show you, cause I have it here somewhere. I did a, a stream, I've been doing streams called Lettering Lyrics. Uh, that I'll just come online and I'll just do a bunch of lyrics from a band, one of my favorite bands. Uh, sorry, they fell behind my they fell behind my thing. There we go. There we go. So this kind of ombre effect happens when you are switching with a dip pen. So I started with black and then I started adding purple and then I started adding pink. So you have like a fade. Um, if you're using, thank you. Uh, if you're using like a, like a fountain pen, like you have to switch the cartridges and that I don't think so. I don't think you can. I don't have fountain pens at home so I, I can't be 100% certain but for me it doesn't make sense. But. Um, yeah, like when you're using a dip pen, you can kind of do whatever you want. It's fine. All right, let's get right in there, right up close. Uh, and then we have another one that is called a compound curve. So you're starting up thin, Pulling down that thick line is along the 55 degree and pushing away from you. So up, down, up. And then we have the overturn. We have the overturn. So these are your eight basic strokes that build the copper plate alphabet. And I know it doesn't look like an alphabet right now, but I promise it is. I'll unzoom a little bit. So the word A, for example, are three of these strokes put together. Oh, thank you for following. I really appreciate that. Thanks for joining. <laughs> um, so yeah, so let's say we're doing the letter A. So the letter A is an entry stroke, an oval, 
and an underturn all put together. So then if you do the word like cat, for example, it's an entry stroke. The, um, it's kind of like an oval starting and then an oval and then oh, under turn. downstroke, exit stroke. Then you can kind of go back in here and cross your T. So there's word cat. So that's kind of the basic concept of the eight basic strokes. So what I was gonna do today was do the variations of, uh, of these things. So if you don't want it to look so um, so the same, you want to do a little, like, how do I want to phrase this? If you want to do and mix and changes and make it a little bit more you, like how to break the rules, kind of. Kind of like different fonts, yeah. So a font is for a computer, scripts are for when you're doing them by hand. So it's, this script is called Copperplate, uh, the terms copperplate or engrosser script or English round hand, they, they're not all exactly the same type of writing. No, no, that's fine. Don't apologize. Like, it's all good. M most people don't know. Um, but uh, in this day and age, they're all kind of interchanged very frequently. So copperplate, engrossers, English round hand. If you look any of those up, it's all basically this kind of thing uh, for like uh, for a baseline. So copper plate when you're doing it, let me just write the word. I'm also actually oddly enough not used to using ink. I usually use uh, paint as my uh, as my medium. So hold on. This is also a new nib so it's being a little bit finicky. There we go. There you go. So this is kind of what copper plate looks like, pretty much. But I wanted to do today was doing variations and changing certain things and it completely changes the look of your script. So then you can kind of fiddle with it and decide like maybe I want it to not look so uh, traditional. Maybe you want it to look a little bit more like free. We can totally do that. Uh, if you want to get more information about specifically like how to make the letters and all that kind of thing. I've been doing um, every week uh, for the past like nine weeks, except last week I missed it, but um, teaching like straight up copper plate, intro to copper plate 101 uh, on Twitch. And I've been re-uploading them onto my YouTube channel. They're quite long. They're between an hour and two and a half hours each. But I mean, if you want to go through them, they're there. You can go in and, uh, take some notes, figure that out. We can also ask me questions now too. That's also totally fine. Uh, cool. All right. So let's change colors because I can and I have them and they're ready to go. So yeah, so this is like just the basic eight strokes. So you can also not have them at that 55 degree. You can also do them upright. So I had a little bit of fluff. Sometimes what happens with these things, because they're so sharp, they pick up um, like any kind of fluff that's on your page that you don't realize is there, it picks them up. So by upright, I mean like, instead of having it this way, you're having it this way. So you have the same basic stroke. So you have your, your entry stroke, you have your oval, you have your oval, you have your underturn. 
you have this big underturn. You have your ascender loop, your descender loop. Hey Mar, how's it going? You'll be very happy today. You know what I'm using? Actually ink. <laughs> uh, downstroke. Big downstroke. Compound curve. And an overturn. So instead of having them all at the 55, we're having them all straight up and down. So this, as you can probably imagine, will change how your lettering looks. Yes, oblique pen holder. That's thank you very much. It's a it's a delightfully fun tool to use. It makes me happy. Oh, I will so I am not paid by them. Okay, but I did get sent these for free. Um, it's called Ferris Wheel Press. It's based in Canada. I did a little show and tell at the beginning of my stream, but I will show it to you too. It's from a brand called Ferris Wheel Press, like I said. It comes in these delightful packages. And look at this bottle. Isn't it cute? Oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. But yeah. I'm using these guys today. The packaging makes me very happy. And that one in particular has some silver in it, has some little shimmer, which is pretty cool. So that, that's the ink that I'm using today. It's from Fairfield Press. I have to give them a shout out because I'm like, listen, I didn't have to pay for this. This is great. I got a sample, like the, the box, like it was a whole, I felt like, a, I felt like an influencer. It made me feel very happy. Um, okay. Anyways, back to the calligraphy. <laughs> yeah. Ferris wheel press. Go for it. It's uh, the collection that they sent me yesterday is their spring collection. I think it launches uh, next week or this weekend. I feel like this is right up your alley, Mar, because you do like fountain pens. So, uh, all right, cool. So we have the upright script. So now I'll do copper plate again, but I'm going to do it with the with it not being on a 55 degree. I'm going to do it with with it straight up. Got some foozles. There we go. So yeah, you can see the difference pretty much right away. You know, you have this one on that angle, this one's more upright. And you can really play with that too. Like when it's when it's upright. Uh, one of the scripts that I like to use that's kind of more fun is upright, but instead of being upright and thin, I try and it like because I Copper plate is based on an oval. Yeah, right? It really it really changes everything. But then another change that I'm gonna do, like I said, so the copper plate is based on the oval. I'm gonna make it like it was based on uh, a circle. And then, but I'll, I'm gonna keep it upright.
Copper plate is the name of the script of, of this one. Um, but what if, if you're asking historically, what does it mean? So I'm not a historian, but from my, my memory, and you could probably Wikipedia it <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it was when they used to do, um, like printing or they used to engrave onto a copper plate what the print was going to be and then they would put ink on that and then press that onto the paper so this is that where that name comes from i'm pretty sure but you can probably wikipedia that and then correct me <laughs> oh yeah you got your glass tip pen very cool yeah it's much faster to test inks out with a glass tip pen for sure you should dip go and test instead of like doing cartridges and stuff, I'm sure. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so it kind of went like that, but then there's also engravers script, which is, anyway, actually, I don't know why I'm trying to describe it to you and point when I'm like not a master penman, hold on. The, the a lot of, in this book, which is free online, you can get it. Um, if you look it up, if you look up the Universal Penman, uh, in here, you'll see a lot of, so these are all engraved plates. Um, and this script is a bit, it's not exactly what mine is, but it's very similar in the way that the rules are, are structured. So like this is a bit more English round hand versus copper plate even though it was done on a copper plate to be printed. It's why it's a bit, it, the, the terminology gets, mud, gets muddled uh, a lot now, especially because this is like not something that a lot of people do. So, but yeah, just if you look it up online, you can find it for free. It's like, um, it's, it's past its copyright date now. So you can, I think you can just kind of go download it. It's fine. I just, I, I wanted mine uh, hardcover. So I ordered mine off of Amazon, I think. But yeah. It's really fun. It's really great as a reference reference book, seeing how things got done back then. Yeah, right? Oh, God. Visual ASMR. Absolutely. But, like, these little flourishes, I'm just like, but how do you do this? Like, I'm okay at flourishing. I can't do this, that, that like, consistently. Can you imagine trying to engrave that on a copper plate? And, like, then, like, consistent. Anyways. Lots of work. So, yeah. It's very fun. Yeah, <laughs> like I have an engraver and I do engraving myself, but uh, not that fine, that's for sure. Uh, uh, faux calligraphy is very fun. Sorry, I just saw what you said, Mar. Um, it is very fun, but yeah, like you have to practice. It's kind of one of those things. You just gotta, gotta keep practicing. I make it look easy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey Liz, how's it going? Um, my actual handwriting is barely legible, <laughs> I have to say. Um, yeah, you would think that practicing calligraphy would like improve my handwriting. Nope, it has not, not at all. But sometimes too, when I get like in the, in the, like the groove of something, I'm like, mm, this is nice. I could do this forever, which is why I made it my job. <laughs> All right. So another, um, variation you can kind of do, let me, let me skadoodle that in there is, uh, elongating the entrance and exit strokes. That's pretty much, yeah, my handwriting is barely legible. <laughs> like, this is a whole nother ball of wax. All right, I switched inks too. I'm now using April showers. Um, so yeah, so you can elongate the strokes. So you have uh, the entrance and the exit strokes. So it won't really affect the oval, 
um, but it will affect uh, the spacing of your words. So by elongating them, this is what I mean. Ah, wait. On my Instagram, there's actually one because it was International uh, Handwriting Day last month, I think. And I had done a sample of like my handwriting versus all the clear scripts I know. <laughs> there's a big difference. <laughs> it was like uh, handwriting versus copper plate uh, versus calligraphy versus calligraphy versus calligraphy. If you find it's on my Instagram. Uh, easier than me trying to pull it up, I think, because I'm not sure in what file folder it is in my room, in my uh, in my office. Uh, cool. So, entrance stroke elongated, because normal normally an entrance stroke is like this, or maybe like this. But if I'm elongating it, I'm kind of pulling it. Then we're gonna do an underturn, and then that exit stroke is gonna be way pulled over. Uh, down stroke, exit stroke is gonna be way pulled over. Uh, it won't, doesn't really affect the ascender necessarily, except for the entrance stroke to it. Uh, the descender would be like that, and then you would like kind of pull that exit stroke out. Obviously, this, when put into context, is a J most of the time, or a G or a Y would be the, or a G or a Y. Yeah, it would be that side, the right side of those letters. Uh, we have our compound curve, so it would be elongated, entrance, regular, down, elongated, exit stroke. And then an overturn with that elongated entry stroke. So, in context, actually let's write the word Montreal, because that's where I am. It'll be fun. So we're coming in elongating that line here, and then this will be the same, and then out, the challenge with this one is keeping your spacing in between the letters the same, which I is not great right now because you can tell here it's much longer and then I'm starting to get pull them tighter again. So something like that. So you can kind of like stretch it out a bit more. So contextually we have regular copper plate, upright copper plate, upright copper plate but rounded and then stretched out copper plate. All of them kind of have a different vibe. All of them kind of feel like appropriate for different things. Um, this one is fun for like addressing fun parties. If that may like that. Uh, it's kind of a bit more young. This one's a bit more traditional. This one feels a bit more Instagrammy. <laughs> and then there's, you know, if you want to break another rule, technically you should not be breaking the baseline. Okay. And by breaking the baseline, I mean, this is the baseline here and you should be staying within these lines, right? However, you can always uh, decide to purposely break the rules. So I think sometimes this is where I have sometimes challenge challenges to people who do like modern calligraphy. And it's not because their script isn't beautiful. It's just sometimes it becomes illegible because like, uh, they don't necessarily think about like the rules that they're breaking because they don't necessarily know that there are some, right? Um, so I guess my, my, my opinion on that is like, you do you, there's no like calligraphy police out there in the world who are going to be like, no, no, you can't do that. However, uh, I do think that at least like knowing the basics of like those eight strokes and then changing them purposefully. So then your writing still remains legible, I think is important. Um, anyways, sorry, thank you for uh, letting me get on my soapbox on that one. Because it's just something, because sometimes I'm like, 
I it's so good I just can't read it your Q looks like an R or something like that right um but yeah but it looks nice on Instagram so hey you know what you get your follows you get your your IG clout I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shame you for that that's cool <laughs> Uh, all right, cool. So this one will be like a more of a baseline break. Uh, hard to do without a grid. Mm, when you are beginning, I always recommend using a grid all the time. Uh, you don't have to use it on uh, directly on the paper. I have a light pad and a light pad. So it's essentially it's a big plastic thing that has a light underneath it. So I can put this and then another sheet of paper on it so then I can write like I have a guideline um, but without having to like print it out or something and then I can use it for like a card or something uh, if you don't have that uh, possibility uh, lining it with with a ruler and a pencil doing your calligraphy and then waiting for the ink to dry and then erasing your pencil lines also works for most people um, the maximum amount of like no lines I would recommend when doing pointed pen the specific uh, would be at least a baseline because it's really easy like if like imagine if you're just trying to write on a line with like a regular pen most people don't write on a straight line right they're usually like curve it down because that's the way their body goes or they go up or the lines get or like your words get smaller so if you're trying to do it then also with a different tool at least having a baseline, I would say, would be pretty important. Uh, yeah, okay, so baseline break. So entrance. That's fine. Oval. Doesn't really change. But I'm gonna break the baseline on that underturn. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then I'll break it maybe a little more on that one. I really need to, to break that one there. You know, maybe I'm not breaking here, maybe I'm breaking down here, you know? Uh, and then for you know, your compound curve, you're gonna break down here. So, you know, you, you get maybe a bit more movement in, in if you're changing it this way. And let's do the word Montreal again. It's fun to do. You know, you have your M. And I don't always break every single one, right? Oh, hey, patients, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, you know, let's zoom out. Let's look at this in context. We have copper plate at that 55. We have copper plate at like a straight up 90, straight up 90 but rounded. We have elongated. And now we have one that we're breaking the baseline. All of them kind of have a different vibe. Just taking a break. That's cool. Thanks for taking a break with me. I appreciate it. The baseline break is it's a look. Some clients love it. Like some of my clients are like, that's exactly what I want. And some clients are like, not for me. And that's okay. Life, I can give you a good recommendation for one that is good and is also portable. Like you don't have to leave it plugged in because it has a battery. I'll, sh I'll show you mine because that's the one I have. Not spawn, hashtag. <laughs> I just have it. from the brand Huey on. It's this guy. Uh, so it plugs in to charge with like a, I think it's a mini USB. 
but once it's charged, you, it it because it's such a gigantic. Uh, this one's this is the, I think their biggest one they have that can run a battery. Like it doesn't run a battery forever, but you know you turn it on and all of a sudden, like cause I just had some guide sheets put on there, like by tape. Then you put a paper on it, and then you can see your guidelines through, which is great. Um, or you can just run it and have it plugged in. The li the wire is really quite long, uh, but this is really fun because sometimes I'll, when COVID wasn't a thing anymore, uh, when I would go to calligraphy workshops, I would bring my light pad with me because some light pads are really, um, like they're really big and cumbersome and they're really thick because uh, they'll also be on like an angle and stuff. And I'm like, I just want a thin one because this one's pretty thin too. It's nothing too crazy, so. Anyway, so that, I like the, I like that one. So if you find it, the Huey on ones, um, if you don't care about it being a battery one, I think the battery, the ones that are work when only plugged in, I think those ones are a little bit cheaper. Uh, let's see, Mar, is it this one? Let's look, let's look. So the one that I have is the big, the big guy. I'm pretty sure. I did get mine through Amazon. Yeah. So the first two on that list are, I'm pretty sure, yeah, they're the battery ones. I see the little thing. And then the other ones are the ones that uh, plug into the wall and you need to have to leave them plugged in. So cool. Thanks, Mar. Appreciate that. But yeah, a light pad doesn't solve all of your problems because sometimes you're using paper that's really opaque or black and like a light pad is pretty much pointless and useless and it won't work, right? Um, but yeah, the that's kind of why I, I recommend at least knowing how to line them with like a pencil. Yep, yeah, yeah, fair. But depending on where you are, you might not be able to order directly through them. Like I said, I just ordered mine through Amazon because uh, I'm in I'm in Canada, so there's sometimes it's just cheaper to get things through Amazon, like versus trying to deal with a supplier who's in like China or Taiwan. Uh, let's see, was there another variation? Oh yeah. Oh, that's a great idea, Patience. Yeah, you can bring a little battery pack with you. Totally cool. Yeah, battery pack totally makes sense as well. I don't only do calligraphy at my house in which that I have access easily to a plug. Like I said, when I would go physically to calligraphy workshops, they're in usually schools uh, or like a florist kind of thing. And like you don't have a plug right next to you. So I needed the one that has the battery in it so I could use it on the go. Or sometimes I'll go to a cat, like again, when they, when they were open, I would go and I would work at a cafe instead of always working from home. And so I'd bring my light pad with me and you don't always have access to a plug. So I, for me, I'm, I'm like, I'd rather just bring my, just have the battery. Um, Cause I don't actually, I don't even think I have like a portable charger, to be honest. I don't think I, no, I don't have one. <laughs> so I guess it's whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever you want. Whatever, I guess, makes sense for what you're gonna use it for. I just really like the really big one because sometimes I work on really large sheets of paper. So having the small one that only works for like a nine by 12 is not good enough for me. But yeah, patience, I didn't even think about using that for the, because I, I just, I don't have a battery pack, so. Uh, all right, let's go and continue. 
Um, yeah, so we did the regular copper plate up here, which is based on the oval. So we can also do that as well, uh, making it more rounded too. And you can kind of just maybe round it and also maybe we want to break the baseline at the same time, right? So. Oh, I automatically always want to go overly. <laughs> This one is hard because I'm, I'm, I have to actively like really think about it. Mm. Less for me, maybe for someone else, you know, but there's just a lot of changes that you can make to your script that can give it a lot of different pizzazz, if we want to use the word pizzazz. We should bring that word back. Pizzazz, pizzazz is a fun one. All right, so let's do them all in a, like underneath each other so we can really see the differences. I'll zoom in a little bit. Oh yeah, also something you can kind of do when it comes to ascenders and descenders, you can kind of do a little, little flourishing to get into those. So for the L, let's just do a C curve to get in there. You know, you can do that. Thanks for popping by, Mar. Have fun learning Italian and Greek and all of the languages that you like to learn. <laughs> Thanks for dropping in. I appreciate it. Ah, oh, you dropped Greek, fair. Well, enjoy, enjoy Italian. All right, so we have the regular copper plate. Then we're gonna have, also, by the way, if you're ever gonna do this, I don't know if you've noticed, but depending on the angle that my lettering is gonna be and I change the angle of my paper. So with copper plate, cause it's at 55, I have the paper at that, but with this one, I'm gonna do it upright, so I change it to be directly uh, in front of me. Doing things like this too is also useful having them right underneath each other. Cause then you can see the differences like pretty straight away. So this obviously takes up a lot more space because we're moving at an angle versus this guy, which is gonna be tighter together. So something to keep in mind if you're deciding it to do it that way. And now, uh, so this one's this one's still based on the oval. This one based on the oval, and then we can do one that's based on this, the the circle. So, let's look and see how that one's going to be. Wow. 
while I am doing this, if you guys want, uh, if you have like a one, one line phrase that you like, you can let me know which one you like, and I can do that little phrase for you if you like while I'm doing my stream, just so you can see. Yeah, you know, like a sentence of like 10 words or less. And just let me know, you know, which which script variation you want me to do it in. So here we go, regular copper plate copper plate and then this is whoop, upright and now copper plates upright but also round all of them have a very different a very different vibe very very different look all right so now we're going to do the one that's a, was a bit more elongated but still based on the oval and still um Still at 55 degrees. Uh, Sarah, I don't know if you're still in here, but I'm curious. Did you follow along with the, with the pencil? And if you're not in here anymore, well, you know. That's fine. <laughs> oh, how's it been going? Have you been enjoying your playing? So yeah, we have regular copper plate, upright, but, oh, and now we're like really stretched out. I mean, oh yeah, it looks kind of fun. Very cool. Uh, I have a Discord. There's not a lot of us. I think it's me, my husband, and a couple other people in there. Um, but I do have a tab that says art and or homework. If you want, if you feel so inclined, you can upload whatever you do. Um, and then like, I can give you some feedback if you'd like. Not a ton of feedback, but a little bit if you want. You hold your pen funny. Uh, pencil, right? I'm assuming, like a regular one. Do you hold it like this or something? Like how's your grip? Cause some people I know hold their pencil like this. Whereas I, I hold it like this. Also, I'm uh, ignore my little scabby scabs that are here. I have a bird. I have a, uh, a conure, and he's a parrot, and right now he's going through his terrible twos. Uh, it's springtime, so he's horny, and he's also uh, molting. So he's just really cranky right now, and he takes it out on my fingers, and he thinks my fingers are a chew toy, so please ignore. Ah, fair. Oh, you, t you death grip. Fair. Um, kind of like this, I guess. He's cute until he decides that he wants to be a vampire and like suck my blood. <laughs> so sometimes when I'm streaming, um, my, my husband will take him most of the time if he can, if he's not on like a business call, because he has a, his office is in the back of the apartment. Like that, I guess. And like death gripping. Trying to see how I can help you with that. Kind of like this. I would say try to not hold the pencil if you can, not all the way down. Try and hold it a little bit further back if you can. You can see I'm trying to here. I'm trying to figure it out. I can see on my that other camera. This might be helpful. Let's see. Let's see if I can help you. I'm trying to fiddle with my little camera on the bottom here, just so you can see. Whoop, not my giant mess on my desk. <laughs> like 
like this, I guess. Okay. Up and to the right, like this, I guess. Actually, that might act, if if it does do that, it might make it a little easier to do the fifty-five degrees. Because I'm trying to think. Because if you're like this, balance maybe on your pinky if you can. I mean, it's difficult. I'm not gonna lie. It is hard if that's how you're. Yeah, try and lean on your pinky and take your time. So actually, that's something I didn't mention at the beginning of the stream. I'm, I'm going way faster than someone who's just beginning. When I started, I was going very, very slow. So like calligraphy is not a fast thing for this script in particular. Uh, it's very slow. It's very slow moving. It's very chill. Um, you can't run in a, me a meeting in five minutes and have a whole page done. Like it's not gonna happen. So, I mean, just take your time because I'm trying to fiddle a little bit to see Like it's, you know, it works. You just need to practice it. I don't know if that helped at all. But slowing down is always fine. Always a good idea. Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe. I wonder if... So there are usually stretches and stuff that I go through at the beginning of my streams, which I did not do today. Yeah, a lot of people use a straight holder. I, I learned with an oblique, so I find it very hard to go back to a straight holder to get that angle. It just doesn't work for me. Like, I feel like it's super strange in my hands. Um, yeah, fair. Yeah, with a, with a pencil, I, uh, I treat it kind of the same way I treat... Because I work on the side of the pencil, so where... Like if I'm gonna do it in, a, in pencil, I'll move this here. Like I usually do it that way. So I always, I always have like the 55 kind of jutting into my, like I'm gonna imagine that like a dart, it goes right into my stomach. And then I hold it on the side that way. But if you use a straight holder, like when you say you hold it vertical, it's like this, I guess. That to, me, that to me feels so odd, but I know a lot of people do. And I just, it's odd on my hands. Um, I know PA Scribe uses only a straight holder. And I watch him work and I'm like, I don't. The paper is vertical. Like, like, like straight up like this. And then you're working like this. Is that how that works? I'm trying, because it's hard to see in my brain how that would be. Oh, like this, like this. Oh, fully, like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. And you just work this way. That's cool. Uh, there is a left-handed calligrapher who works upside down, I'm thinking. Like, it's just fully like this, and she just, it's great, like she, or like this, and she goes. Like backwards and upside down, it's so crazy. I don't remember who it is. I would totally name drop her and be like, go look at her stuff, it's cool. Yeah, if it's like this, yeah, because I was thinking if it's horizontal, like I was thinking this would be horizontal. So if it's the paper is like this, and then your arm is like this, that makes sense. Yeah, my, I, I do friends who like would almost like write in school and it would be completely like to the side. It was so funny watching them like lean on their desk taking their notes that's so funny um 
Okay, cool. So we have this one, copper plate, copper plate. We have the elongated one. What was the last one we did? Oh, yeah, breaking the baseline. Breaking that baseline. Oh, patience. That is a great, uh, great, great hint. Fantastic hint. I love that. I, uh, I had heard that somewhere. That's so good. I'm going to try and remember that for students. Yeah, Sarah, great. Let's, yeah, try what Patience just mentioned about holding something else in your left hand. I've heard that before and I forget that that's a thing. Yes. Yeah, I can't imagine doing it upside down either because it's just because they hold it like this and they go and it's like this way. And I'm like, my brain hurts thinking about it like that. Yep. I'm sure, you know what? I'm sure I heard that in her class too, because I, I took her many years ago from, from Barbara and that makes total sense. Yep. Totally. Well, like I said before, and I got distracted, I usually do some stretches before I do calligraphy too, where like, like I'll, I, and people get freaked out because my hands are flexible, but like I'll pull back and like it stretches the muscles here and then the same thing. And then like you stretch your shoulders a bit. And it helps like loosen your body up a little bit too, if that helps. Oh, actually, Patience, have you been watching Paul Antonio's classes that he's been doing, like those five pound ones? Speaking of, just you mentioned him. Oh, I have his manual and there's a couple of my friends who I've seen have been doing the 100 days of copper plate. And I'm like, hmm. So I don't like the breaking of the baseline with the word copper plate. It doesn't work super well because there's too many P's in a row. Uh, and I'm because I'm using all I'm using all the same type of um, P's. It doesn't work as well. Let me try and experiment a little bit to see if I can make it look a little nicer. Not loving the way this one looks. Montreal looked better. Let me do that one instead. It was a bit easier because the the way that I kind of think of it when I break the baseline is I don't do every single one as I do every other one. So let me try that. Let me do the Montreal again. a bit better yeah this this was getting a bit messy but this one's better and you can really exaggerate it if you want I'm not a big fan of doing the crazy exaggeration but I think this one looks much better but yeah it's like every other 
like letter has the little breaking of the baseline a little bit which gives it another look you know uh, and then I had the last one was um, rounded but still at the 55 Kind of like that. All right, let's see what they all look like. And now we have a page full of variations, which is super fun. And you can kind of continue playing with them, right? Add more flourishes or let flourishes. Maybe you want to break the entrance and exit strokes for everything. So that's something actually that I learned from Pat Blair, who was a former White House calligrapher. Uh, I took an online class with her uh, during COVID, and her vibe is very like she keeps the letters themselves very standard but like all of her en entrance and exit strokes always break the baseline and the x height always that's just her her thing i was like girl i am super stealing that i love that and i do that like almost all the time now subconsciously because i did it here <laughs> and i did it here just a little bit so thank you sarah i appreciate that but yeah like there's a lot of different stuff you can do and they all kind of look a little different right so uh question to you guys is there like a little sentence you want me to do and if yes with which script would you like me to do it with because i will do that now if you want because i'm trying to think of something short uh, i'll have a little a little bit of my tea Or what I can do is actually I can write your guys' um, usernames while you guys think about it. Better days are coming. You got it. I'm, I'll write Patience's name and then I'll do it. I love it. Would you like it in a different color? Because I have three different colors. So the one I'm using now is the, the, the gray one, the uh, April showers. But I can do the, the mulberry one, which is kind of like that purpley color, or green. Or we can go really crazy and I have some like fun paints. Mulberry, you got it. I'm on it.
There we go. Better days are coming. I hope that's true. <laughs> uh, I forgot actually to clarify which uh, script I, blah, 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 which one you wanted it to be in. I just ended up doing it in the like my my version of copper plate with a little bit of a fluff at the end. Um, I hope that's okay. I hope you like it. My pleasure. All right, Sarah, I'm going to write your name, but I'm only going to write Sarah. I'm not going to write all the numbers. I'm not the best at doing numbers. I'm not lie. <laughs> Thank you, Patience. Your name is there, too. I don't know if uh, oh she's not there anymore so I was going to say if Liz was still here I'd write her name too but there we go you know what I'm going to write I'm going to write Seba Bienali this is the uh the thing that's in Montreal right now, everyone has in like their windows with a little rainbow. Seba Bienali. Of it will get better. Or it will be alright, actually. Seba Bienali. And that one I'll use my green, my mint ink. Shout out again to Ferris Wheel Press for sending me those. Oh, and you can hear Bruce yelling <laughs> in the background, I think. Once I have done this one, I think Bruce having a conniption in my husband's office is going to be my cue to go get him. Which means it'll be my cue to end the stream. Because I... Screeching into the mic is like the literal worst thing ever. <laughs> it's... Uh, someone on the street once, because I was talking about it, they were like, it's like anti-ASMR. I'm like, yeah, pretty much. It's, it's exactly what it is. There we go. Alright, guys. I'm going to write a little, just like, Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Little, I'll do it fast. But yeah, Sarah, when you're doing calligraphy, don't go this quickly. Go fast. Go slow. <laughs> It's uh, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I'll switch back to this guy. So thanks guys for dropping by today. I super appreciate you guys. You bought a light <laughs> Oh my God. I, I should have some kind of affiliate link. I don't know how many people have bought that free light pad because of me, it's so funny. Um, but yeah, thank you for, for popping in. Super appreciate you. Um, I usually stream Mondays and Thursdays. Oh, cool. Okay, I'll uh, I'll write your uh, I'll write your name next time, Liz. Um, so yeah, I usually stream Mondays and Thursdays. I think I'm gonna start doing them in the morning. It makes it a little bit easier for me. So like 10:30, 11 ish uh, Eastern, 
Uh, I hope everyone takes care. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And if it's sunny, go enjoy that bloody weather. Bye, guys. See you next week.